Hello, welcome to this uh, Next Substance Painter um, update. Um, so Substance Painter has come out with version 8.1 and it has some new features and I thought I'd just do a quick video on a few of them. Uh, so this one, or this little video, is going to concentrate on the baking changes. So um, the baking um, options now, you have three extra options. There's Opacity, there's Height, and then there's Bent Normal. Um, now... I don't know much about bent normal, but I'll you know I'll go through the process and uh, we'll see how it looks. But we're going to start with height. So uh, I've got a mesh here in Modo, uh, which I've kind of displaced around quite a lot, and then I've got this flat plane of considerably lower polygon, uh, sort of ten by ten, um, and this one is uh, basically huge. Uh, but what I want to do is create a height map which will turn this plane into something that looks far more like that. And I've done it in Modo already. Uh, not Modo, sorry. <laughs> Substance. Uh, so I'll just go through that process. So we'll go New. Um, go Select. I want my low plane. And 2048 is fine just for this. It's not a UV tile workflow. So I click OK. I'll discard my old project. And there we go. So now when we go to bank maps, uh, we get all sorts of things down here. Uh, so I'm just going to turn everything on and then I'm going to turn off the bent normals and opacity. And then in the common settings, I'm going to go and find my high res map uh, plane. So I've exported them both as OVJ files from uh, Modo. Uh, so as you can see, this one's 7K and this one's uh, a lot. Uh, so let's select our high poly mesh there. Now, there's something to be aware of here, um, and that's the max and uh, min frontal distance. It's probably going to vary from model to model. If you have, you know, a bigger displacement, you'll need to use bigger values. Uh, and I do here, so let me just increase this uh, up to, say, 0.1 uh, for front and 0.1 for back. So, you know, if we look in Modo, see... This is front and this is back. So we need to kind of estimate that distance. Um, I could probably calculate it if I was really uh, bothered about it, but I'm just going to use this for now. So we'll bake those some textures. I'm baking them all because I want to see what it looks like as a whole. Um, but if we rebake, we'll have a look. Now you can see that uh, nothing has actually happened with the height. And it might be a setting I've got, but I don't know uh, just now, but I can get over it by cheating. Uh, so if I create a new fill layer now and press Alt and Height just to isolate the height channel and go to my projects library. So if you see all libraries, just change that to projects in textures. It's got all of our baked maps here. So if I grab this height map and drag and drop that into there, Oops, that's not the right one. And drag and drop it into the height uh, slot. You'll see something happens, but not a lot. Now that's because we need to go to our shader settings, onto our displacement settings here, and we need to give it some height. So let's try 0 0.1. 0 0.1, there we go. And to make it look uh, nicer, uh, because currently it's at subdivision level 1, so there's not much geometry in it at all. Uh, I can start to increase my subdivision count, uh, really until it stops changing. So as you can see, as I go sort of further up, you know, you see minor changes, and then eventually it stops changing. So that will give us that. So this now should look very much like our... Uh, original plane. There might be some differences in it. Uh, it might be that I need to adjust my baking, um, but it should look pretty much like this. Uh, it's going to be hard to tell now. There we go. Let's get to that angle. Whoops, not that angle. And I'll hide my low plane. Perhaps I'll turn Ray GL on just to get a slightly nicer uh, view. Oh no, that's a terrible view. Let's turn it off. <laughs> right, let's 
go fast actually yeah there we go that's a nice of you so you can see we've got like three kind of hillocks here and if i look in here we've got those three on this side so it's a little lumpier and i could probably do with um you know changing my height let's have a look and see what it looks like so under the channels bake channels that's what my height looks like i could probably refine that to get something better uh, so in texture settings if i go back to mesh maps and uh, i'll deselect all and select height actually i'll select height and normal and then back in common i can start to experiment with these numbers to you know see if i can get or find those real thresholds where that uh, that change actually happens there we go and now i need to go back to my material map to see whether it made any difference it doesn't look like it has okay so if you get any blank spots in your bake let's go down to the normal channel again uh, sorry not the normal channel the height channel which i've lost oh come on john there we go if you get any sort of blank bits in this bits that don't look like they're matching the to the the terrain it's because your plus your frontal and your rear projection modes are too low um it's not going far enough to pick out you know that detail okay so that's a bit of the normal map um that's pretty handy because now i could come in here in my material and if you know if i'd actually done this seriously and you know um, done a proper terrain of, of some description um, then i could basically turn my flat plane into a displaced terrain to paint it and do my thing okay so uh, next we'll have a look at the opacity map um, so i'll talk to you then okay so for the opacity map i've made a very simple example uh, i've got two planes in modo and we have our low plane which is uh, actually let's hide that one just for a second uh, a single polygon um, and then i've got my high plane which i've cut some polygons into and cut some holes in because there is where i can put walls and doors obviously there's many more uses for this but you know um so i needed some extra geometry so i've made that and jobs are good so back to um substance and if i go file new and i can select my low wall which is a single polygon discard that and now i can bake that opacity map into this now why would i want to do this well it could be that i've made like a modular wall um but i always want the windows to be in the same place and the, and the doorways to be in the same place perhaps i've got some replacement parts i could put in there so if i can bake my uh, positions in here for the for those uh, uh, pieces that are going to be transparent then you know that gives me a head start gives me a good go so uh let's bake these so texture bake maps uh let's select everything uh select all and i'll just take off the bent normals for the moment now again um if you've got any depth in your um transparent model you may need to adjust your uh frontal and uh rear occlusion distance or you know uh calculation distance uh, but for this in this case i think they're close enough in fact they should be dead on if i've done it right uh so when i bake my maps we'll see what comes out a lot of nothing so far and okay so now i can go and have a look at my opacity map and nothing's happened and do we know why nothing's happened because i'm an idiot i didn't add my high def mesh did i silly man so let's just redo that and you can see now that those holes are actually being projected okay so let's go to our material there we go and it's showing the positions of those uh transparent bits on the on the high mesh uh, but it's not actually doing anything with them if i want to include them 
into my stack here I can add a layer uh, if I press alt and opacity I can uh, filter for my project maps and then find it drag and drop it in and there we go now we can see through them so now I could go through you know make three or four different you know texture types for this wall um, and I could project them all onto that single polygon instead of having all of those you know extra polygons in to uh, define the position of the wall of, of the doorway and the, the window I hope that makes sense uh, it does in my mind but sometimes things that make sense in my mind don't make sense to anybody else <laughs> Okay, we'll have a quick look at the uh, bent normals uh, next, um, so I shall talk to you then. Okay, bent normals then, and uh, for that, or oh, for a demonstration, I'm going to go File, Open Sample, and I'm just going to pick Meet Map. There we go. So. Uh, I don't have a personal example to do here because I don't use it um, but what I understand bent normals to be is a way of combining the normal map uh, with the uh, ambient occlusion map or occlusion map um, to use them in a single a single image such that you know um, render engines that uh, can use a bent normal map uh, save on the resources so instead of having um, an occlusion map and a normal map um, you would have the bent normal map which combines the two together and you can kind of see uh, what's going on uh, because uh, this map has got all of his um, maps uh, baked if I go to his uh, normal map you'll see it's pretty blank it's flat blue um, exactly no kind of surface at all and if I go to the bent normals you'll see it looks a bit different um, so it's got some highlights in places it's got low lights you know um, so it looks different you know basically what I'm saying uh, but if I go and have a look at the ambient occlusion map uh, you can kind of correlate between the two you see uh, in these dark occluded areas especially you know around his um, hood there and under his arms if I switch now to the bent normal map uh, you can see that there is a very big difference there so you know this is very light blue this is sort of indicating occlusion again this is red in here um, it's darker in here um, if I turn it around you'll see you know there's a bit of a transition there where the uh, <laughs> the maps are you know it's perhaps not been UV'd um, with this in mind um, so yeah I mean everything's there so the bent normals is a combination of the occlusion and the normal map uh, for renderers that can use it um, so that you only need one map instead of the two uh, I hope that makes sense um, as so I don't have any experience of it so I'm a little bit lost um, well yeah <laughs> I've done some research but um, I, I've got no practical example beyond what I've shown you but I hope it makes sense and you know if you know you know if you if your render engine can use a bent normal then you'll perhaps know more than I please feel free to you know tell me in the comments um, because I'm probably wrong about something somewhere okay so um, that's the three new maps in um, Substance Painter 8 or 8.1 rather uh, maps that you can bake out and use in um, in your texturing process um, I can imagine that actually the height map you know could be used uh, you know to direct different materials to different levels in your um, in, in your model so on my landscape example for you know if you pick the white very white whites which are the the peaks if you like the very highly displaced ones you could put snow on there and then rock everywhere else um, yeah things like that um, for the uh, opacity map um, you know that could help you you know make very low poly assets with trans um, trans maps in them um, you know such that you could do all sorts of things with that 
you know you can amend it you can adjust it you can create different designs do all sorts of things anyway i'll stop rambling now <laughs> i hope you found that uh, useful or interesting um if you have any comments let me know uh, if you've got any information about bent normals let me know um yes i'll talk to you soon